Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Time Attack video. This time, we took the six hour drive out to Calabogie for a camp night before the track event. Now, I've never done camping, I've never even slept outdoors before, so we decided to get a tent that you can build in the bed of the truck, uh, which, is, which should be better than sleeping on the floor. Now, overall, the experience was pretty good. The facilities were open for the washroom, so it wasn't too bad. Now, with that said, the next morning, as everyone was getting their car ready for the day, I came to find out that we are required to do the sound check this year. Last year at CSCS Calabogie, this was exempt, and we did not have to worry about getting a sound check. Now, my car failed miserably, and I had to search around and find some way to make it quieter. Of course, that can be done with a silencer. Now thanks to Cody with the RX-7 for lending me the silencer. He pitted beside me and his car passed soundcheck easily. A shout out to Brad for waking me up way too early this morning. But it's all good because they both were a great help and also Travis Hazelton also helped me out to get back on the track. Now for my first session out, I uh, haven't seen the track for about a year. So I decided to just take it easy and see what I can do. The track was still a bit wet. But it wasn't long before, once again, running into transmission problems. So I fixed the issue with third gear and that's all good, but for some reason my fourth gear would not stay in. I had to hold it in order for it to stay in and obviously that was going to make my track experience that day terrible. So at this point I had two options, either sit out or try to set a fast lap and then continue the rest of the day, let the car rest and wait for the final. The reason for this is that Calgary is such a far track that everyone qualifies for the finals so it made sense to stick around and just push for the one last lap. On my first finals run, yes, I decided to push as hard as I can. Of course, I would have to hold fourth into the gear whenever I used it, but I think it was manageable given that the track is so long and there's not too many turns where I have to hold on to fourth while turning. With this said, I also tried to use third a bit more and a bit longer than I usually do. Um, I'm not one to really max up my rev limits because of course I like the car to be reliable. Uh, but with that said, it was not too bad and I believe I was setting one of my best times of the day. Now of course, I slowed the video down here so you can see on the left side the marshal waving that red flag. What would have been one of my fastest times of the day has now been cut uh, due to an accident on the track that they need to clean up. Everything happened so fast that when I came off the track, they thought I was retiring the car. Just because the flag was waved two turns before the pit entry, it made it difficult for the method to get across that fast. With the session red flag and the cleanup for the accident taking some time, uh, we were definitely getting a little tight for time with the track. With that said, we were giving only one timed lap to make your time count. This is usually not my strength. Uh, my time, my fastest lap is usually set on the second or third lap. And as you can see here, I went in a bit too hot on the final turn and caught some oversteer. Now this really set me up on a slow straight because with the power my car has, the straights are my advantage. And here, I just cut that advantage off by oversteering into the final turn. I still hit a 230.2, which was my fastest time of the day, but I've done faster times at this track. Still, it was a great day. Again, me and Tony barbecued, had a few drinks, and then decided to head home. Given that I was saving the car all day, I even had some time to take some drift shots, 
and just relax for most of the day. I'm not sure if I'll fix the car before the finale, but we'll try to ride it as is. See you then.